Hello everybody, I am super excited today. I am Luke from Jackmate and I am putting out this video of the top 100 Steam games released in 2017. Hopefully you guys are just as excited as I am to explore this list, but before I give you guys the list, let me give a couple disclaimers. The first is I didn't play most of these games. These are based on an algorithm I just created and plugged in based on how many ratings the game had and how positive those ratings were. I tried to stay unbiased as possible and even some of these rankings I wouldn't agree with. When I put a game on this list, it's not saying that you should buy it, it's just saying you should go check it out yourself. Most of the recommendations or the things I say not to buy the game are simply reading through what other people have said about it on Steam reviews. These are going to be just short 15 second clips of the game because, well, if I talked about it any longer than that, this video would go on for hours and hours. The other disclaimer is that I did not put any games on there that did not receive a positive rating on Steam, so there are some big name games in 2017 that you might be surprised aren't on this list. As I said, there's flaws to this list, and next week in my video, I'm gonna talk about what I think those flaws are, so stay tuned if you want to know how I made this list, and the reason why I think some of it is flawed. Overall, I hope you guys just have fun exploring different games that came out on 2017 and viewing this more as a recap than an actual ranking system. If you see a logo of a wolf and the score that they gave, that is a person from my YouTube community. It's a community full of great Let's Players and streamers. If you see their name on the screen, it'd mean so much to me if you went and checked out their channel. They're great people. They deserve your guys' support as well. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy The Telltale Series is a story-rich adventure game that features five episodes of the Guardians characters. Some say this game is full of comedy, while others have said it seems a little kiddish. 99 is Creativeverse, which looks like, well, Minecraft, obviously. Some have said it's one of the best spin-offs of Minecraft, while others say, well, it's a free-to-play but DLC cash grab, stay away. At number 98, we have Loading Screen Simulator, which sounds pretty awful, I know. It started off kind of as a joke game, but it was released on Steam and has gained a lot of popularity. If you like clicker games, then go try it out for free on Steam. Number 97, Ultimate General Civil War, which is a RTS game based off of the American Civil War. A lot of people have said this is a great RTS strategy game immersed in history, while others have said they would rather have a campaign that's more freeform. Hold Fast Nations at War is a first person and third person shooter set in the time of Napoleon. Some people are comparing it to Mountain Blade, but even better than that. Others say it's still in early access and can use some tweaking and balancing. Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy is a annoying rage inducing game where you control the hammer with the mouse trying to climb up the mountain. Some say it's the worst game ever played to stay away, while others say it's the worst game ever played to go out and buy it. Foxhole is a massive strategy war game where you control an individual character in the midst of hundreds, and your character stays live even when you're offline. Some say this is a great game, while others say the servers and matchmaking need some work. Stories Untold comes in at 93, which is a horror game that is text-based and point-and-click. If you're into suspense games and don't mind a scare, then this could be a good text-based game for you. At number 92 is Gang Beast, which looks like a completely odd, weird Super Smash Bros for the PC. A lot of people love it, but the people that don't are saying it's poorly optimized and runs poor on their PC, so be careful if you're gonna purchase it. Endless Space 2 is a turn-based 4x space game with tons of civilizations, customizable ships, and much more. People have been raving about this game, although some say the AI is really dumb and there is no challenge to the game. Kingdoms and Castles is a city builder strategy game where you build up your city and then fortify and defend it. Some said it's very addicting and well worth the money, while others said, well, it was only fun for a few hours and wasn't worth the 10 bucks they spent. The 89th ranked game was Syrian Warfare, a game that tries to show you what went on in Syria during the war, although some have said this is more of a game of propaganda and they can't believe this RTS didn't have multiplayer. Only get it if you like single player RTS games. At 88 is Black Squad, a first 
person shooter that is free on Steam. Some people have loved it and said it's well worth a download and a try, while others said you get what you pay for, it's free, and has problems with the ping and sometimes hackers. Battle Chasers Night War is a Japanese RPG game sort of like the classic Final Fantasy. While it's probably not quite as good, a lot of people have said this game does an excellent job with combat and a great story. Battle Brothers is a turn-based tactical RPG which has you leading a mercenary company in a gritty low-power medieval fantasy world. The feedback has been pretty positive but also warns you of a heavy RNG game. If you can't handle that, then I would not recommend it. Niche, a genetic survival game, is all about creating your own species and, of course, trying to have them survive. Feedback has stated it's not a great strategy game and you should only buy it if you're in it for the animals and the stories that you can create with them. At number 84 is Domina, a Roman gladiator training simulator. It looks like a lot of fun and a lot of people say they have fun and it's worth the $10 price. However, eventually you get to endless mode which has no purpose, which becomes boring. Rivals of Aether is a true Smash clone for the PC, which boasts of really great gameplay and balanced characters. Some say they like it even more than Super Smash Bros, which is hard to believe, but that is their opinion and not everyone's. Hand of Fate 2 is an RPG card game that puts you in the midst of the action depending on what cards you play. People say that the combat is the weakest part of the game though, so only get it if you like the deck building and RNG aspects of those games. At 81 is Zup 3, which is a puzzle game that looks a little boring to me, but apparently some people find it addictive and they keep popping them out over and over again. Although some people apparently just play them for the Steam achievements. <coughs> Show offs. At number 80 is Hob, which is a puzzle platformer with combat. Apparently this game has no text or dialogue and you're supposed to figure out the story by exploring the world. Some have loved that aspect and others have hated it. At 79 we have Vanquish, a third person shooter that is supposedly all about boosting around the map instead of hiding behind cover. While the game mechanics are a lot of fun, people have complained about the short gameplay and only recommended getting it on sale. At 78 is Bomber Crew, a World War II bomber strategy game, although with a bit more of cute graphics than you would think. People love the intensity of the missions, while others say that it's more micromanagey and becomes about speed clicking. Car X Drift Racing Online, which is a pretty self-explanatory title, it's all about drift racing. Some people say this is the best drift racing in the game they've played, while others say it's a little bit grindy. Also, no damage to your car is received, even smashing into walls. At number 76, Tannenberg features massive World War 1 with up to 64 players per game. Guns and gameplay are great, however, sometimes if there's not 64 players, you'll put with AI that are apparently pretty dumb. They Are Billions is a steampunk strategy game that is about building and managing a human colony after zombie apocalypse. Mini State is a very fun strategy survival game, although it's still in early access and needs a lot more content. Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. It's a game that's supposed to be a parody to other dating games, full of humor, comedy, and of course, dad jokes. Most of the complaints were about the story being meh and not long enough. 73 is CS2D, and yes, I know, technically this definitely is not a 2017 game, however, it was remade and released on Steam 2017, and is a fun, free, top-down shooter, nothing to buy, ever. Number 72 is Runer, which is a brutal action shooter set in the year 2091. The game has been compared to Hotline Miami with lots of ultra-violence. The only complaint was maybe the lack of depth and time to the game. So beware of that. Bendy and the Ink Machine is a first person puzzle action horror game that features some really creepy cartoons. The first chapter is free to play while the second and third are $6 each. Go ahead and give the first one a try before deciding whether you want to buy it or not. At number 70 is Pyre, a game made by the same people of Bastion and Transistor. While this game also has high reviews, it's different than the other two because it's apparently more of a mix of visual novel and a sports minigame. At 69, Avorion is a 
co-op space sandbox where players can build their own spaceships, fight epic space battles, explore, mine, trade, and wage wars. Almost all reviews of this game are positive besides of a couple people that have had bugs in early access. Little Nightmares is an atmospheric horror game that puts you in the place of escaping what looks like your childhood nightmares. This game was well loved besides people being frustrated with a 2D side scrolling camera in a 3D environment making them miss a lot of ledges. 67 The End Is Nigh is a trial and error platformer that is very difficult compared to the likes of Super Meat Boy but even better. Of course stay away from the game though if you can't handle the truth of a difficult game. Middle Earth Shadow of War which is a follow up to The Shadow of Mordor, one of the most loved Steam games of all time. The game apparently is comparable to the first one but the story isn't quite as good and they added loot boxes which had a huge kickback from the community. Late Shift is an FMV crime thriller which means it uses full movie clips throughout the entire game. Your choices matter and bring out different endings to the game which people really love. For a video game it's a well done movie that you get to take part in. At number 64 is Sonic Mania which brings Sonic back to its old school roots in the 2D landscapes. If you've liked the original Sonic games then apparently they did a really good job with this one and you will love this Sonic Mania game. Soda Dungeon is a free to play RPG game where you can apparently upgrade your tavern and purchase sodas. People have said it's a great RPG if you don't mind a little bit of grinding or forking out a tiny bit of money for microtransactions. At 62 is 20XX, which is a roguelike action platformer that you can play with a friend. It looks and plays like Mega Man if it was a roguelite, although some say it's definitely not as good as Mega Man was. Overall though, the ratings are quite positive. 61 is Thimbleweed Park, which is a point and click adventure game that compares to those released of the 90s. Some say it would be one of the best if it was released in that time. It features great stories, characters, and some great humor. We Were Here is a two player game where you're trapped inside an abandoned castle. It's a puzzle game that features almost real life escape rooms. You have to work with your friend to escape the castle by solving these puzzles. VR is optional. Confess My Love is a free to play RPG anime game, apparently all about Willy and trying to decide if you should confess your love to your favorite girl Lisa. Some say it was boring while others say it was a lot of fun with many different endings. Rising Storm 2 Vietnam is an excellent 64 player first person shooter that takes place in Vietnam cities and jungles. Some people have had problems with bugs and crashing lately but other than that it's a great game. Sniper Elite 4 is a great sniper World War 2 game that takes the great gameplay of Sniper Elite 3 and puts it into an open world. It's a lot of fun and people are raving about it. Some are just frustrated with the fact that they add DLC to an already $60 game. Close your eyes if you don't like creepy things. The Evil Within 2 is a survival horror game that looks quite terrifying. People have stated that this game is much better than the first one and if you're into the horror scene then this would be a good game to get. Is there something wrong with you? Do you like being on the evil side of things? Well now you can in Dungeons 3 by creating an underground dungeon to take over the entire world. This game has great ratings if you like simulating the dark side. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator is one of the latest in the Five Nights at Freddy's games. Don't let the trailer fool you, there is much more to the little mini game that is shown here. Go out and play it for free. I'm assuming though of course that you don't mind nightmares that night. 53 is Kindergarten. It's an abstract puzzle game set in school where things are really, really messed up. If you're a twisted person that loves dark humor, then this is the game for you. If not, well, you won't want to watch anymore. Another adventure is another adventure game. Crazy, I know. It has some good story, some deep thought process, although it is really short and there isn't much to it. It's only a $2 game, so you don't expect to be blown away, but you might be surprised. Death Coming is an interesting puzzle game that puts you in the place of the Grim Reaper trying to kill others and not get caught by Guardian Angels. A lot of love has come for this game although there's a few that said the Guardian Angels were a bit annoying and buggy. Sword with Sauce Alpha is a ninja parkour action game that uses lots of different weapons to complete your mission. 
However, the game is in early access and hasn't been updated for three months, so only buy it if you want it in its current state. At 49 is Fate Extella. It's a hack and slash anime game. If you like games such as Dynasty Warriors or of that type, then this is the game for you. If not, and you're not into the anime thing, then I would stay away. The Hunter Call of the Wild set out to be the best hunting simulation game of all time with tracking and very real life hunting skills. However, some people have had bugs in the game crashing and had problems with the tracking that ruined the really entire experience for them. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is apparently one of the best JRPG games on Steam with an overwhelmingly positive rating. It features great storytelling, great character development, and apparently some pretty good combat as well. If you love fun and casual indie RPG games, then Cat Quest is apparently the one for you. While perhaps kiddish towards some, it is very cute art and has great hack and slash combat, which makes it totally possum. At 45 is Heat Signature, a top-down action roguelike game that has similarities again to Hotline Miami. It has great tactics to the combat, but apparently lacks a little depth and variety to the overall game. Old TV is a reflex testing game. It's a clicker through TV channels. Yes, it does sound weird, but apparently it has a cool soundtrack, difficult gameplay that confuses your mind, and the best part is, of course, that it's free. Another free game to come out this year was Alien Swarm Reactive Drop, which is a top-down co-op shooter up to 8 people. I played this with my friend Cyfar, the wolf, and we had a lot of fun with it. It's a great free game if you have some extra time to play it. At number 42 is Darkwood, a top-down survival horror game. If you're sick of horror games simply being about jump scares and you instead want it to be about a creepy atmosphere, then this would be a great game to get and explore the creepy world. Streets of Rogue is a roguelike game where you have to make it through randomly generated cities. You have to decide if you want to be stealthy, if you want to be a person that just destroys everything, or try to talk your way through. Everyone that didn't have bugs gave this game a great rating. Emily Away 2 is a story-based game that takes you through Emily's life as a senior back in the early 2000s of instant messaging and surfing the web. The first game in the series is free and you can try that one before buying the second one for $5. Gora Goa is 39th on our Steam game list and has incredible ratings if you like puzzle game. It's all hand drawn and apparently the puzzles are well thought out. So if you're into puzzle games, well this was probably one of the best of the year. Hive Swap Act 1 is another shout out to the 90s point and click adventure games. It's based on a webcomic called Homestuck and it's really good if you've read that comic but even if you haven't, people say it's still a really good game to try out. Portal Knights is an adventure multiplayer open world RPG that looks a little more like for kids. In fact, most of the positive reviews say that they've played this game with their kid and liked it. However, this game probably isn't for everyone if you don't relate to those styles of games. If you're someone that loves addicting arcade score chasing games, then Orbit XL this year was the game for you. It's meant to be a little fun time waster of a game, which is good because it's only $1. The sequel to Outlast came out this year with some high expectations. Some were met by it and others fell flat. According to users, the gameplay wasn't quite as good, nor the story. However, overall it's still a good game, just not quite as good as the first one. The sequel to Total War Warhammer also came out this year and actually did better than the first one. People are saying if you want a good strategy fantasy RTS game, then you will not be disappointed unless you can't afford the $60 price. Yeehaw! West of Loathing is a slapstick comedy stick figure adventure in the wild west if you're looking for a game full of comedy this one packs a punch someone even said it was the funniest game of 2017. super flight came out this year and people loved it for those that want a casual fun game that's not intense it's supposed to help you relax as you wing suit through beautiful worlds try to get better scores and listen to a great soundtrack Tekken games have been going since I was a little kid growing up on the PlayStation 1. It's still going strong with high ratings and if you're into a good 1v1 fighting game then Tekken is a great bet this year with Tekken 7. 
Finding Paradise is a recent RPG Maker game that came out with so many positive ratings. If you love RPG Maker games, this one has a great story that apparently, for a warning, will leave you bawling your eyes out. Bayonetta is now an 8 year old game that was originally released for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. If you have not played this classic hack and slash game, you now have a chance to on Steam. Tales of Berseria was another great Japanese RPG game to come out this year. It has 95% overall positive ratings. To many, this game features great combat and characters that will make you laugh and cry. Ravenfield is an interesting take on first person shooters as it has ragdoll physics and is all about taking down enemies of the other color. It's still in early access but it's being made by one developer who's working really hard. The only complaint I've seen is that it does not have multiplayer. At number 26 is a surprising hidden folks with a lot of high positive ratings. It's a hidden object game that reminds you of Where's Waldo or Where's Wally depending on where you live and this game features great hand-drawn art. Night in the Woods is an adventure game featuring Mei who returns home after dropping out of college. For most, this game has hilarious dialogue, likable characters, and cute art. However, others saw this game as a little bit shallow. Fallout Shelter is a free-to-play strategy game where you have to make the best vault underground that you can. Most people have found this game very fun, while others have found it a bit too repetitive. However, it's free so you can go out and try it for yourself. Prey is a single player space game where you are the key subject of an experiment meant to alter humanity forever. If you're into single player shooter games like Bioshock or Half-Life, this would be a great single player game to check out. The creators of Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater have now created their own turn based co-op adventure. If you like this company style, then you'll love the game. It's still in early access, but they're just saying it's because they're trying to balance the game more and more. North Guard came out this year and was a well-loved RTS game centered around creating a Viking civilization. According to most, it's not a very long and in-depth game, but if you're willing to replay it over and over, then it's well worth the $20. Black Wake is a silly multiplayer game based on being a pirate where you can shoot cannons or attack with a sword or shoot with your gun. The physics of this game are pretty hilarious and if you have some friends to play with on your ship it makes it even more fun. From the makers of the well loved Insurgency comes another first person shooter this time in World War 2 called Day of Infamy. While the engine may not be perfect, some people even prefer this game to the new Call of Duty. At number 18 is a hat in time. If you miss the old good days of Nintendo platformers, then this one should not disappoint as it's one of the best rated 3D platformers out there on Steam right now. What Remains of Edith Finch is an indie walking simulator that received really high ratings even from critics. You get to explore your family members' stories of their death. According to most, its stories are killer. Friday the 13th the game turned survival horror into a multiplayer game which puts Jason against the campers. There's a lot of mixed reviews around this game mostly based around the balance of the game between the campers and Jason and some bugs. Oxygen Not Included is a space colony simulation game. It's the same makers of the game Don't Starve, which is one of the most loved Steam games of all time. If you liked that game, then you'll probably like this game as well. Detention is an atmospheric horror game set in a fictitious world in the 1960s with Taiwan under martial law. It's not your average horror game of running from monsters. It's a lot more about a psychological atmosphere. If that's your type of thing, as a great story and beautiful graphics. Ghost Recon Wildlands is an open world co-op military shooter. You can team up with three friends and take out drug cartels. The reviews are definitely mixed in this game, especially around the story and the horrible AI in the game. Resident Evil decided to take their game in a different direction with the seventh one by making it first person. It seems like the change paid off as many people loved the scary aspect of the game and found it entertaining. The only people who didn't like it said the stories weren't up to snuff. Another fighting game came to Steam with Stick Fight the Game. 
If you like fighting games like Super Smash Bros, but you want more of a funny aspect and a ridiculousness to it, then Stick Fight the Game is probably your game for this year. Especially if you have friends to rage at. The first game of our top 10 is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, made by the same creators of Enslaved and Devil May Cry. This game is set in the Viking era and has great graphics, an amazing storyline, and pretty good melee combat. Life is Strange Before the Storm took the number 9 spot with an incredible, story-rich, every-choice-matters type of game. It's a prequel to the original game where you play as Chloe, who I understand is a teenage girl with a whole lot of problems. Number 8 of 2017 is a roguelite metroidvania action platformer known as Dead Cells. This became one of the best roguelites out there on Steam because of its addicting and well-balanced combat. At number 7 was a great action game near Automata set in a dystopia run by powerful machines. This game was so well loved and should have been closer to number 1, but the port to PC was bad giving a lot of game crashing bugs. Assassin's Creed came out with another game this year, but this one was actually really well loved by the community, saying that it was probably one of the best Assassin's Creed's of all time. This time, you're set back all the way to ancient Egypt. At number 5, one of the best rated Steam games of the year was Slime Rancher. Yup, Slime Rancher. Comparable perhaps to the well-loved games of Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley, it's all about exploration and farming up, this time with slime. Hollow Knight came at number 4 for the year 2017. It featured great soundtrack, perfect difficulty, and lots and lots of content in this Metroidvania game. If you like difficult platformers, then this is a must-have for $15. Number 3 for the year was Valorite, which took the strategy out of MOBAs and put you into round by round action. If you love the fighting in League of Legends or Dota with the auto attacking of Smite, then you'll love this action packed multiplayer game. Divinity Original Sin 2 is the second on this list, but could be one of the best Steam games of all time. It's a turn based RPG that has so many choices so many different characters and so much combat, you could be playing this game your whole life. With over 25,000 reviews, 96% of them being positive, our number one game of 2017 is Cuphead, a lovely platformer with shooting that's very, very difficult with some beautiful cartoon art. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun even though it was a lot of work putting this video together. If you want to see more of my content, whether that's me vlogging, playing Steam games, or doing more of these Steam lists throughout the 2018 year, subscribe to the channel, comment below, get to know me, and I'll get to know you guys as well. Have a great 2018, everyone.